Welcome back, painting friends. It's summertime, and we're having an ice cream social. My favorite ice cream is coffee mocha chip, but that's not very pretty to paint. So I've decided to go with a strawberry ice cream cone. And uh, I hope you have fun with this. You can choose whatever flavor uh, pleases you. We're just going to use a few basic colors. Of course, our primary palette, just yellow, red, and blue. But if you have a yellow oxide or a yellow ochre and some burnt sienna, that will be helpful too. So you won't have to mix those colors for yourself. So let's get started by having a little drawing lesson. So we have our palette set up. I've put out my yellow ochre and a little bit of lemon yellow. I have a bright red here that I think will make a pretty strawberry color, some raw sienna, and a little bit of blue. And we're going to make our paints really uh, watery, washy to start with. Remember with watercolor, that's the way we control the value, the relative light and dark is with the amount of water in the brush. So let's begin with the with the cone. And I'm just using a round brush that will come to a nice good point, has a, a, a nice belly, so the belly, the middle of the brush, holds the water, the liquid paint. And I'm just going to get my paint really very thin and washy so that it's just uh, just a, a, a thin wash. I want to be able to see all of my guidelines through there. And I also want there to be enough water in the brush so that it will saturate the paper and stay wet for just a few minutes so that I can get some shading on. 
So very, very thin and weak. Rotate your paper if you need to rotate your paper. And use the belly of the brush for spreading the paint and the tip of your brush for getting into the tight places like the point of the ice cream cone there. Come along. And if you have some little white spaces left, that's kind of nice too. Um, we've tilted this cone a little, so I'm going to have some shadow coming up from the, the underside here. And uh, so there we go. Just get a nice little edge on that. That's good. So when we pick up a little stronger pigment now that this is wet, and uh, I know that it's wet because it's shiny when I tilt it toward the light, by putting on more color, and actually the ratio of color to water, there is more color and less water. My color will pull outward into the wet wash that went on originally and make a nice gradient or a graded wash. So along the shaded side, let's just put some stronger color. Now I still want to see still want to see the uh, the lines coming through because that's where um, the waffle is going to show up. So we'll do that. And we're just going to let that rest a little bit and uh, give the paper a little chance to dry. And we'll go and put some of the pink on the strawberry cone. So once again, I'm just using a lot of water and very little paint, very little pigment. I want this to be really light and washy. And if this is the sunlight, okay, we're coming down from the upper corner here. So when I put this on, I'm going to try to leave some white spaces toward the, toward the sun area. And I've mixed up quite a bit of paint in my wash here. So I can keep on going and just fill in that whole shape. And I can adjust it a little if I want to. When you're painting, just remember if you've got a pencil line there that um, the pencil line may not erase once you have put paint over it. So you can leave the pencil line exposed if it's a little dark and then erase it afterwards. But if you have painted over it, uh, you might run into a problem. The paint will not, the, uh, the graphite rather, will not erase uh, once you come over it. But don't be too concerned about that. Just kind of get it on because we'll add more color. Okay, so that's a really pretty light color for uh, the basis, the highlights in the strawberry ice cream. So uh, we can move a little bit of the red pigment over and now start uh, dropping in some color uh, where it's going to be shaded. So I know that where the scoop has come down, made a little fringe there, it's going to get a little deeper and it's going to be a little deeper, a little darker on the left edge. So let's just put a little stronger color along the left edge. And because it was really wet, the <clears throat> darker color is going to just pull right into that wetness. And maybe around the fringe a little bit, we'll add a little color. There we go. And we want some highlights on the fringe too, so just let it break up a little bit. You can rotate your paper as needed. Clean water on an edge will give you, a, will smooth that edge out. And as it dries, 
we'll be able to add more color. There we go. So that started. We've got our basics down. We have the, the lights and the highlights preserved. We've got to have a little shadow started. So this has started to dry. I think it's dry enough. I'm working under some strong light so that actually helps the helps it dry a little faster. You could always use a blow dryer if uh, you were working under different conditions and you needed to uh, speed dry a little bit. So I'm taking a little bit of the raw sienna and I'm going to mix some of that raw sienna in with my yellow ochre to darken it a bit. Not too much. So each one of the little triangles on the waffle, you can see the little triangles on the waffle, and we want to leave um, a grid mark. We want to leave white space and light spaces and along those uh, grid marks in the in the waffle. So I'm going to just draw a line, sort of like a seven, and then leave a space before I draw the next one on. So there's a seven and I come almost, I'll leave a space and go down one of these rows here. So even if you've missed your graphite line, if you start off like this, if you start off with a row of sevens, then you can just pull that color out and down into the little triangle and leave the space that you need. By starting in the middle, go. So by starting in the middle, we know where we can need to go for the uh, the ones on top and below. So now you can work in any direction once that has been established. So I'll go make another seven, leaving a white space on the next row. Another seven. You can see there's a little bit showing on the edge. Here's another one. And then just fill out the triangle or the diamond shape it's actually fill it into a diamond shape so we can repeat this all the way down the cone until we have our waffle cone okay seven there it is I'm going to leave that space and pull them into triangles. And don't forget the edges and, and these little squares down here, these little shapes down there. They're going to get really small, but you can just use the point of your brush to put those in. This one comes out to the edge. There's a space and there's a little one. And now we'll move up. Until the entire cone is filled. So don't get too dark too soon, but just a little bit darker and we can even that out with another layer of color if needs be. I think there's another space here. And fill in our triangle. Very good. 
So if you had a little problem, if, if uh, some of the color ran together, uh, a good way to resolve that is just to take a clean brush and you can lift some paint out by just scrubbing. And that will bring back a highlight space. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so let's let that settle in there. And we'll go just a little bit deeper. The next layer will go a little bit deeper. And this is just going to be up in the very top of each of those diamond shapes. Just up in the top of each diamond shape. So the paper is still a little wet, and that's okay, that's a good thing. We're going to put just a little bit of color at the top, making each one a little darker. The paper is still wet, so it will pull it down, it'll pull the color down. I think that will work. We'll find out as soon as it dries. Okay. Remember a clean, clean brush will soften the edges. This is really good practice for anything that you're going to paint. We go from a light wash and gradually add more pigment for the shading and that way we will get nice clean edges and nice clean transitions from color. That looks good. Let's let it go. So we'll come back up. We just notice how we're working holistically here. We're going to work back and forth and while that's resting we can come back in and add the last bit of shading and detail to the ice cream cone. Always getting a little darker. And if you have a darker red, you can go ahead in your palette, you can go ahead and just pick up a darker red. If you don't have a darker red, then add a little bit of blue to your red, and that will give you a darker, cooler red for the shadow. Not too purple, but just enough to make a darker value and a little bit cooler for the sh shadows and for the little bits of strawberry that will be in there. So I've started with my bright red. I've added a little blue. And right along the scoop edge, little ruffled edge, I can add some shadow, rinse out my brush, blot, and soften the upper edge. And I can wiggle, wiggle the brush it will soften the edge and add a little soft shading to your cone. So it's a clean brush, clean water. Up there. And the underside could use a little stronger shadow. We'll take some of that same color and go around the outer edge just a little bit, rinse, blot the excess water, and soften with the belly of the brush. Anywhere on the outside edge that might want a little shadow, 
be put in the same way. I wouldn't get too dark along this lower edge here where uh, the cone is coming up underneath. So be real careful not to put too much paint in there. But you need some variation to show those little ruffles that were made by the, by the scoop, that little fringe on there. Anywhere you want to soften an edge, you soften the edge with a clean, moist brush. That looks good. A little stronger color for some little strawberry bits. You probably have your favorite brand of ice cream here in New England. We like Friendly's Ice Cream or a brand called Richeson's. I, <laughs> I'm not receiving any endorsement uh, <laughs> fees for, for mentioning their brands, but they really are good, especially Richeson's Ice Cream. And we are ice cream lovers here. All right. Just a, some little random... Oops, little random color to get some soft little ice, little strawberry bits in there. Now, if they were these were chocolate chips, I guess you we would want uh, something uh, a little, little stronger edges. But this is strawberry, so we can make it soft. All right. And how about those drips? We've got this oriented on the page. Uh, so that it's tilting a little bit um, and gravity would be pulling those drips down so I'll start and pull up into my ice cream here so that it looks like you know it should be parallel with the uh, with the edge of the card so that uh, there we go so it looks like it's actually dripping down. And we can lift out a little highlight. Looks good. And our final bit of shading on the cone is to put a little shadow under the fringe of ice cream, a little bit more down here, and we can deepen that rossy, that excuse me, that burnt sienna, which is sort of a, a, a reddish brown color. Don't want it to get too dark, but if you add just a little touch of blue to it, it will cool it down for a shadow. The color should be quite weak meaning not too much pigment, a little more water than pigment. Blot it on the brush to make sure it's not too strong. And then just follow, just follow the edge around and down that one side to put it in shadow. and a little final shading right at the point of the waffles. Clean my brush and pull. There we go. Right in here. I think this needs a little bit a little bit stronger definition. Maybe this is a sugar cone. Sugar cones are a little darker. I like that. Okay. Fun, fun, fun. And flex and spatters are always a great way to um, finish off any illustration. And I've got some color here. Let's just use a little, some little primary spatters to add some happiness around the outside edge. 
And I think I'll use all three of the colors. So I'll use all three of the primaries. Maybe they're, uh, maybe they're jimmies, little sprinkles. We could just sprinkle them on. A little yellow. Happiness, golden happiness. And a little touch of blue. Just to bring back our primary palette. There we are. Okay. That should do it. And that looks luscious. I think I'm going to go and have an ice cream cone. Thank you for joining me and I hope to paint with you again. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and check out my YouTube channel. I'm now on Patreon. Become a patron and get lots and lots of bonus uh, materials and surprises. Go to my Patreon page and my website which is LaRayArt.com. Bye for now.